welcome to Beckman Coulter's Northern Colorado Training Lab. I'm Dr. James O'Kraken and today we're going to be using my setup Flex LX to look at the start and end process of how we set up a new experiment inside of Flex. Uh, we're going to be using a Duraclone 10 color T-cell subset assay and in the process we'll learn how to draw gates and regions and how to get statistics, how to adjust gains, how to do compensation on a 10 color experiment. Alright, let's get to work. Let's look at how we create a compensation experiment in Cytoflex. Click on New Compensation. I'm in electronic record management mode here, so I have some folders to work with. And I'm just going to name this example 10 color human T cell subset. And I will save that experiment. And now I'm going to pick out what single color controls I have. I have a bead unstained control within my single color compensation, so I don't need that. And then I'm going to uncheck any channels that are unused in my experiment. Once I've got those all unchecked, I can go back in if I wish and put in what specific clones or what specific lot numbers I'm using for this experiment. And once I'm done labeling that, I'm going to let site expert know that I have beads for all of these single color controls. Once that's done, site expert creates blank files for me with all the names of my single color controls and plots for each of them. Now I load on my bead sample and start running that. I'm going to move my scatter gate to contain the singlet population of beads. And then I'm also going to adjust the Lin log adjustment on this first plot so that I can clearly see the negative and the positive population and contain those within the gates. And record that file. After it's finished recording, that is saved as part of the compensation experiment. And then I'll just move on to the next sample. The same thing happens again. Make sure my singlet bead population is on there. Use my lin log slider so that I can see both my negative and positive populations and move the gates to contain them. Now, I've run all those. Let's see what we can do. If I click on compensation setup, I can go in here and change anything that I've already created. If I go to matrix, that's currently all zeros. And if I go to compensation calculation, my matrix is calculated and presented to me. Once I have this, I can save it as a .comp file for loading in later. or I can save it to the compensation library to load into later to new experiments. So I'm going to save that to the library. And then I'm 
going to create a new experiment. Save that experiment. And now I get my standard blank experimental layout. Now that we've got that blank experimental layout, let's start looking at what else we can do. I'm going to pull up my acquisition settings by clicking on acquisition settings. And look at my gains. The default for a new experiment is recommended gains, which are drawn from the QC results from the latest QC run. You can also import them from an FCS file, import them from a catalog, export them, export them to a catalog. I'm going to load in this standardized set of gains. And then I'm going to tell Site Expert. channels I'm using for this experiment, unclick things that I'm not using, and then fill in the labels for the channels I am using. Once I'm done, I'm going to start creating some plots. Right-clicking on the axis title will give you the ability to change that and display what you want. I'm building plots here based on the product insert for our 10-color T-cell subset tube, but of course you can do anything you'd like. Okay, there are all my plots. And now I'm going to begin collecting a little data. This is Leist Beckman Coulter Immunotrol, a whole blood control product. I can change how many events I'd like to record when I begin recording. Play with the Linlog display slider until I get populations appearing the way I like. Change the speed of my pump. I'm going to use a manual threshold here on CD45 in the chrome orange channel to get rid of any debris that's not CD45 positive, so not our blood leukocyte populations. All right. I'm going to stop running that and have a look. One of the first things we'll want to do is go ahead and create some regions and use those to gate other plots. So let's draw something around my leukocytes, apply that to the following plot, and then let's find my lymphocyte population, gate around that. See by right-clicking, I can change the color of that region or its name. And now those CD3 positive T cell populations pop right out from the leukocytes and lymphocytes. Ah, but when I get to my CD4 versus CD8, things don't look quite right because I haven't applied any compensation to this experiment. So now I'll import in the compensation settings I have from that previous run. And then I'm going to import the compensation matrix and convert it based on the gains we have set for this experiment. Once again, I can play with those 
linear log conversion sliders to get populations appearing where I want them. And now I can clearly see my CD4 population and my CD8s. So let's take those CD4s, apply them here, and let's go ahead and apply them to all three of these. By shift clicking, you can select multiple plots and apply that gate to multiple plots. I'm going to display a few more events for while we're running these. And I'm going to record 10,000 events that fall through the lymphocyte gate, which is P2 here. I'll leave my pump speed at medium and go ahead. Now, if I try to record a file where one already exists, either from a run or a previous record, I get an option to either overwrite that file, append that file, or create a new file. I'm just going to overwrite that and take this whole file. Okay, fast forwarding a bit. There's quite a bit more data. These linear to log sliders are really convenient. If I wanted to create some statistics, I can click the statistics button. I get some options to export as well as to be able to change what statistics are displayed. So I'm going to add who the operator is, have that display for all tubes. And then maybe I also want median values for all channels for each of the gates. And now I get that data. If I want to look at the hierarchy of my populations, I can click on the hierarchy button. I can export that to a couple of different formats. And this is another place I can go in if I wish and select my region names and modify them to something that makes more sense than P1 through P4. I'll name that one white blood cells. That's an example of a 10 color setup on a Cytoflex instrument. Thank you for watching, and for more resources, please browse the Beckman Culture Learning Center.